All right, so I just got back to the house and look at those spots. The, the very dark urine spots that were here before that I treated with the urine spot remover are so much lighter. These two areas over here, the two corners of the room are still a little bit dark, but this side over here has made a significant improvement over what it was whenever I left. I did treat it with that urine spot remover, but I also am gonna try this hydrogen peroxide. I heard that hydrogen peroxide can help get those dark stains out of wood floors. But the crawl space being back here, it's not close to anything. It's not close to any of the utilities. But if I come into this third bedroom, I'm thinking down in this closet would be a much better location for the crawl space because right on the other side over here, you have the tie-ins for the water and the gas line. That's where the main gas line distribution is. And that's very central to where the well comes in and to the pressure tank from the hot water heater, all the water gets dispersed to the bathroom, which is just right back on this side of the wall. And the kitchen is right on the other side of the closet. First order of business was to get the hydrogen peroxide on the pet stains. I was surprised to see that it started foaming almost instantly where the pet stains were the thickest. Letting that rest, I was going to move on and start taking off the baseboards and the bedrooms. A hammer and flat bar are going to be your best friends when doing work like this. It's really easy to set that flat bar right up against the wall, tap it in with the hammer, and then just pry it off. A couple knee pads would have been good as well. I didn't think that far ahead. If I had though, I would have saved my knees hurting the next day. Going around the bottom of a room, removing baseboards, isn't exactly challenging or hard work. But what is worth considering is, if you're going to be doing this, you might check to see if you can reuse the boards that you're pulling off the wall. In my case, there was carpet and multiple layers of paint and just general damage. I knew I was going to re be replacing them, so I didn't bother trying to keep them in good condition. So you can see that there's this line of carpet under here. And I thought that it was originally sort of like the back room where it was just fibers that were stuck under the baseboard. But no, 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 no. This is the actual carpet. And as I was pulling off this baseboard, you can see once you get to this corner, the materials are different. That drywall is newer. So that carpet is actually just underneath the wall. So that means that somebody came in here, it was like, you know what this room needs? It needs a, it needs a wall right there. And then I come in and I buy it and I'm like, you know what this room needs? We need to get rid of this wall. I think that actually means it's gonna be easier to take down. We're gonna find out though. But in the meantime, I still have quite a few of those baseboards to take out around the rest of the house. So, gotta keep going. After I'd removed about half the baseboards from the entire house, I started pulling it all into the living room. I didn't want to throw it in the yard because I didn't want to pick up the scraps twice and risk nails getting in the grass, and I didn't really have a good alternative yet. So it'll sit here until I can come up with a better plan. Now, there are a few things that I hate more than sloppy paint jobs. You know that look when something has 20 coats of paint and they never trimmed stuff properly or painted over the receptacles instead of taking the plates off? Yeah, this is the epitome of that right there. The paint was sticking to the trim because they had painted over that gap so many times it started tearing the drywall paper underneath it. So as I was taking up the baseboards in here, I realized that there was a significant gap down at the bottom of the wall for the drywall. One of the studs down, down over here on the, on the right side that is almost floating. Now, that doesn't make me feel very good. I couldn't notice that the, the wall was actually patched right there until I was able to see it in better light. Now I know that the subfloor in the bathroom was replaced at some point, and this could have been part of that repair. Seeing the seams like that, it's not up to standard for what I want. It's kind of a sloppy job. So we're gonna be taking a look at that later. And also, the other piece over here, you can kind of see the outline for another patch that took place it's about the same size. I'm going to assume that those were both part of plumbing issues that had to be resolved at some point. So whenever I come in and actually start replumbing the house, we're probably gonna take a look at those, open up that wall cavity, and see what's back there. We are not short on surprises today, I can tell you that much. I'm probably gonna just keep finding stuff as I go.
Quick word from the future? Yes, absolutely. There are going to be lots of fun things to find later, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to them. For now, we're going to start digging off the paneling from the house. I want to get rid of all the paneling. I don't like the look of it. It's dated and you never find a modern house with it. I know some rentals and apartments are still fairly fond of using it and that's because it's easy to replace. You're not going to punch a hole in it like drywall and have to go through the whole process of retexturing it and refinishing it like you would a normal drywall finish. If you think kind of like me and want to take the paneling off of your house, remember if it goes halfway up the wall and is flush with what's behind it, it probably is sitting on top of drywall and just held in with some pin nails. However, if the paneling goes all the way up from floor to ceiling, it probably doesn't have any drywall behind it. That's because it was just a really fast way to finish and, and didn't take any extra steps to make it look completed. Even though I've wanted to do a project house like this for a number of years, and having taken time to even make a fairly structured plan on how I want to go about doing things, I still find myself pausing a lot and just making sure that I'm doing things right and even wondering which part I should tackle next. I think I'm losing a little bit more time than I anticipated on just doing simple things like staples and baseboards. But I guess it's all part of the experience. This is my first one. So I anticipate that I'll be getting better as I go. They say no plan survives first contact with the enemy and I can definitely testify to that in the case of the house. With the baseboards taken care of, we're going to move into the kitchen and start taking down the paneling from above the cabinets. I'm not a fan of this style, it's rather dated, and you're just not going to find it anymore. I'd much rather have extra room on top of the cabinets. If you're not a fan of spiders, I wouldn't go about doing this task by yourself. There were brown recluses and cellar spiders everywhere up inside of this top... I don't, I don't know what you call it, just a, a box? I don't, Either way, it, I was pretty weary while doing this job. I did not want to get bit, so I made sure that I looked on every side of whatever I was going to pick up before I tried to handle it. After getting down the faceboards that were on the top of the cabinets, I realized that, well, this side has supports and this side doesn't. Now it could have been because over here on top of the stove there was an exhaust vent or an exhaust hood. Hopefully I can just take down that structure and we can find a new way to support that vent. I'm going to have to find out how to manage this waste pretty fast. I get the feeling that the more I get into this, the bigger my trash pile is going to get and the harder it's going to be to manage if I already get into a bad practice. So I think next week I'm going to call in one of those movable garbage bins and I'll set it in the driveway until I get all the demolition done. As a side note, I really don't want to just throw stuff in the yard like I did the carpet because I want the neighbors to like me, so. That took the majority of the day and I'm going to continue next time by taking down the cabinets and the paneling from the kitchen. If you enjoyed the renovation and want to follow the progress, go ahead and hit subscribe, like the video, and comment down below. With that said, thanks for watching and I hope to see you next time.